Listener discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to the I Should Totally Be Dead Right Now podcast, where we tell true stories of survivors of true crime, natural disasters, and everything else in between. And uh, surprise, we is, this is our second episode in a in a row. I know. Boom, boom. Yeah. You didn't even know about it. <laughs> no, we didn't announce it or anything. Just ta-da. Two in a row. <laughs> oh, guys, there's going to be a lot of singing in this episode. I can tell already. She's in the singing mood today. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. A voice of uh, an angel coming at you. <laughs> but we had to do a Thanksgiving drinks we wanted to do a thanksgiving yeah so we uh, just fucking episode. went for it yeah. and just said fuck it let's do it yep here we are again so did we skip a week who gives a shit because you got two in a row now exactly <laughs> we're making up <laughs> and celebrating the holidays that's right so we were drinking michelle so this started off to be a pumpkin pie martini yeah but they didn't have the pumpkin pie liqueur so we had to you know think on our feet here and so we got a little rum chata instead Mm. so this delicious yet wildly rich and strong drink yeah uh has let's see i gotta like work it all out because it was a lot um so it has uh it's like one part vanilla vodka vanilla yeah so it was vanilla. Oh, you did solely. put vanilla. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got whipped vodka for you. That yeah, that was separate. Okay, sorry. Okay. That was for booze for later, okay. Caitlin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I come rolling in with a fucking case of booze, yeah, like an entire box, box. Yeah. And only half of it went for this drink. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's start again. All so right. we have vanilla vodka, mm-hmm. butter shots, Kahlua, which we. Put it did not put it in the first drink and mm-hmm. then put it in the second drink and it's turns better. out it did make it better. Yeah, yeah, it was delicious. Okay, I can still do this. We have one other and then two parts of rum chata. Yes, and a little splash of half and half. You shake it all up in a cocktail shaker. We put a little sprinkle of cinnamon on top mm-hmm. and it was delicious. Yeah, so it's all booze except for the little splash of half and half. So <laughs> yeah. drink it sparingly. <laughs> Um, Not like us. We just went for it. We've had two cocktail shakers full. Okay. Well, don't be like us. Drink responsibly. <laughs> That's right. Um, we got stories to tell. But what do we call it? We can't call it a pumpkin pie martini. I don't know. Thanksgiving martini, maybe? All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Thanksgiving no, martini. The rum chata actually was super delicious because it's kind of cinnamony. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's yummy. Yeah. It <laughs> yummy, really is. strong, and delicious. Absolutely. I guess yummy and delicious are kind of the same. I don't care. Synonyms. Uh, we know look at that. I was like, are you saying cinnamon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Caitlin. All right, should we uh, jump into this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go for so, it. So because it's Thanksgiving, we both did not do a Thanksgiving story. <laughs> but I was going to. I know. I was... You're going to find uh, how a turkey saved Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Christmas, Thanksgiving, sorry. Yeah, um, How a turkey saved Thanksgiving. Or like a turkey saved somebody's life or something. But you somehow. couldn't find it, right? Because turkeys probably won't do that. No, shit. I sure couldn't. I did find how turkey, the country, saved somebody's okay. life um, from their nice hospitality and they helped them get a visa. It oh, was like okay. a runaway. Actually, it was pretty interesting. I should try to find the website because... It's this guy who's been on the run, essentially, since he was 16, mm-hmm. and now it's been over 5,000 days. And so he just, like, chronicles his life on this website, oh. and how he just, he doesn't have a home. He just goes from country to country and just travels oh. all his whole life. But what do he do? Why is he on the run? I think he had kind of not a great childhood oh. and was seeking asylum. Like, I oh. think he was from a pretty... I forget what country. I apologize. Um, But he ended up in Turkey and they helped him get a visa. They got him set up with like all these things and were just like completely delightful to him. Oh, okay. So it turned his feelings about humanity all around. So well done, Turkey. Good job, Turkey. And then I was like, is that weird talking about Turkey, the country on our Thanksgiving? And then I just went down this whole rabbit hole of... Bitch, you're just totally insensitive and all this stuff. And... Wow. I didn't even think of that. So. <laughs> but okay. So so yeah, that's so... my thought process. Oh, all right. You're that's welcome. Uh, okay. So kick us off with your non-Thanksgiving story, please, yeah, Caitlin. I will. So this story is about Salvatore Zotala. 
Ooh, okay. So, Salvatore. Um, I'm going to call him Sal, so I don't have to keep saying that. All right. I'm say his name Sal. a lot. Sal. He's 41 and has a father named Sylvester and a brother named Anthony. Okay. And okay. they live in the Bronx. Oh, in the Bronx. In the Bronx, yes. I so, feel like I want to whip out a Bronx accent, but we all know I can't, so I'm not going to try. You know what? I think you can do all the accents you want, Michelle. <laughs> I think if you have confidence in yourself... I think you can do anything. I'm just going to try to whip out a, a Russian one again and ciao. That's what comes out. Oh, sorry. You're really, well, you're very Italian and this is an Italian story. Girl, I so. ain't Italian at all. I've done the DNA test. Like no Italian. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No Russian either so. for that matter. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> so uh, this family has an alleged alleged association with the Bonanno family. What? Is that the mob? Mm, yes, maybe. Yes, the mob. So, <laughs> so Vincent Bacino yeah, is currently... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> ...is currently serving a life sentence for murder. Mm. And he was the, the head of this family. Of this family, yeah. in quotes. Mm -hmm. Mom family. So, Sylvester is 71 years old, and December of 2017... He survived being stabbed in the neck and back when he found three people trying to rob his house. What? Mm-hmm. So June of 2018, okay. Sylvester gets arrested for shooting a man who pulled out a gun on him. So it was self-defense, but still got still, arrested. He still got arrested for it. Hmm. You know, he got out though. Okay. So, so he was released. Like he didn't have to serve any prison time. I don't think so. It didn't okay. say anything like that. Okay. Um, July. Sylvester's the dad, correct? That's just the dad. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. But now, so that was June 2018. Now July 13th, 2018. So just a month uh, after, at 6:30 a.m., uh, Sal is sitting in his minivan when he sees a red Nissan sedan make a U-turn and stopping near the house. Mm. He kind of knows what's happening, so he tries to get out of the minivan and tries to run for cover. As, the, oh. as he's exiting his van, a gunman from the red car opens fire. Opens fire at the house? At him. <gasps> in the van? Yeah, he got out of the van. And so he's, he's taking cover, but now bullets are spraying all yep. at him. Okay. So Salvatore runs behind his minivan for cover, but the gunman runs around the van, still firing at him. Oh my gosh. Salvatore starts rolling as fast as he can on the pavement. So he's just rolling, like, because he's on the ground. So he's rolling away, Fucking but the gunman... It happen. Yes. But the gunman is firing shots just feet away from him, just following him as he's rolling away. So really, I mean, we're not talking about needing a whole lot of, you know, sniper right. experience. <laughs> no. It's like, boom, boom, you're right there. Pretty much. Okay. So once the gun was empty, uh, they drove away, and this was all caught on camera. Oh my so, god, are yeah. you serious? Mm -hmm. So I'll have to show you the footage. <gasps> it's really quite interesting. So... You can't, of course, the gunman's face is covered. Like, they have it all wrapped up. He has a beanie on. Like, you can't see him. Mm. And you just see him rolling away. It's so <laughs> sad. Anyways, so he was taken to the hospital and survived uh, this ambush with a gunshot, with gunshot wounds to his chest, right hand, and a grazed wound to the head. Oh, geez. So mm -hmm. it was very close. Mm-hmm. My word. A relative spoke to the press at the medical center saying, we want to thank everyone for your kind words, but you can all go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh my God. Hi, welcome to Michelle's press conference. <laughs> it says you can... That is a, I don't even know what my press conference is fucking about, <laughs> but... That's the ending? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so... Sorry. So it said uh, you can go expletive yourself, but I can assume it's going to be fuck yourself. It's the F word. Yeah, it's for sure. Word. So you guys this... can all fuck yourself. <laughs> so this suspect actually remains on the loose. Mm. And Sal is not cooperating with police. Oh, because he's... he's not a snitch. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> probably right. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> But this is not the end of the story. Oh, God. So, <laughs> October 4th, 2018. So, now we're a few months okay, forward. Sylvester, the dad, and he is also known as Sally Daz. Um, Sally or Daz. Daz? Or Sally Days. Sally D -A -Z. Days. Oh, yeah. yeah, Sally Days. Sally Days. My God, can you just call me that from now on? Sally Days. Yeah. Okay. What up, girl? Sally Days? <laughs> uh, Even though he... that's a man. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
He was at a McDonald's drive-thru waiting for his coffee when someone drove up and shot him to death in his car. Oh, I wish I had not gotten so behind the Sally days (laughs) a couple seconds ago. Uh, So police later found a GPS tracking device under his car and was only activated four days prior. Oh my goodness, so they were were following him him, probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So investigators were able to link the device to five alleged blood gang members. Oh. So what was the motive here? Let's find out. Let's find out. (laughs) My word. Well, after investigating some more, police arrested Anthony, Salvatore's (gasps) brother, on murder to hire conspiracy charges for not only Sylvester, but Salvatore as well. It was the brother? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. This is like a drama special. I know, I'm sorry. That is not the twist I was expecting. I, know, right? I thought you were going to tell me he had like a hit out on him too or something. Nope. So Anthony is believed to have provided info to the group and may have even placed a device on the car I himself. I was going to say, you know where the tracker came from. So prosecutors have declined to... Oh, so prosecutors have declined to pretty much say what the motives, what the motive was for either shooting because, mm. you know, it's still investigating and stuff. But the initial speculation was centered around Albanian gangsters seeking to take over Zotali's... They wanted the Bronx. Video- Is that what no, was going well, on? No, well, the video game, the video gambling machine operations oh. that uh, Sylvester was in charge, like, he owned that business. I but they're saying see. Anthony won that business. So it's still like they're saying that Albanians want it, or it was Anthony who wanted to take well, over the family business. It's probably a combination of the two. Like, they right. were going to run it together. Maybe. Even yeah. though I'm sure Anthony would eventually get booted out and then murdered himself. Probably. Put on those cement shoes, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) So, Anthony was arrested (laughs) along with Jason Cummings, a.k.a. The Hat, or Stax. Mm. Alfred Lopez, a.k.a. Aloe. And Julian uh, Stripe, a.k.a. Buzz and Buzzy. Or Biz and Busy. Mm. Sorry. Biz and Busy. I kind of like Buzz and Buzzy better. Right? Yeah. Uh, the four pleaded not guilty, and a judge rejected Anthony's application to be released on a $1.5 million bond, calling the evidence overwhelming and stacked. <laughs> so it doesn't look good for Anthony. No. Oh, dear. Uh, Brandon Peterson, a.k.a. B or Murby, is still being sought after. Oh, my God. Uh, you want to know what my main takeaway from the story is? What? I want a fucking kick-ass nickname. Right? What would my nickname be? My mob nickname. Joel would say McKellie, because he's always calling me McKelle. You'd be A.K. the singer. <gasps> yes! <laughs> A.K. the angel. <laughs> yes! So, actually, um... The singer, they, also the angel. It was alleged that Anthony paid two hundred thousand oh. dollars for the hit on both his family members. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Like, why not just take that money and go retire somewhere? Yeah, go right. Go hit the Caribbean and call it good. Open a little know. bar. But guess how much money you can make? You know. Yeah, it's got to be in the, the millions years. and millions. I'm assuming. Okay, so he wanted to. Since of the coronavirus, he didn't want to stay in jail, mm. and he pretty much said that he would pay like, man, I want to say like three million dollars. Oh geez. Um, for his bond, but that was denied as well because, yeah, no. They're no, like, nah, man. Yeah. The evidence was overwhelming and stacked. Absolutely. So that's pretty much where we where we are at. Um, it's still continuing on. Of course, you know, courts have really have set over a lot of trials and a lot of mm. hearings just because of the coronavirus. So there hasn't been much update since, since mm. it happened. You're um, a coronavirus uh, bride. He's a corona yeah. prisoner. <laughs> right. So it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. But I was going to tell you my family alleged story. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. Things just got gentle, Jane. So my great grandfather, his name is Silvestro Racanelli, and that's hella Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a family in Italy, and he was going to come to America for a better life. Send for them to start their American dream. I see, I see. So he entered the United States through Mexico oh. illegally, um, and actually became allegedly a bootlegger for Al Capone. 
Oh. Right? Uh, so he did this for years, and he actually married and had a different family and never sent for his family oh. in oh, Italy. Now, Caitlin. I know. So he married um, and had my grandma, Lucy. Uh, Lucia, you know. Wow. Cute, right? I didn't realize you had such a torrid past. I know. So where's the money, right? That's what I asked myself. Oh my God. So apparently he got arrested. You know, he got oh. caught. And pretty much it was he would go to jail and lose his money or he could just, they would confiscate his money and he could just leave. So they confiscated his money and he and left. And he left, yeah. Wow. So I believe that's when he came to Oregon. I don't really remember. I, I mean, this is just told to us. This is what we have been told. This is like your family legacy, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. legends, if you will. Yeah, so that's why we're not rich and not in the mob anymore. So <sighs> Dang. I know, right? I know, actually, my mother's dad was her... So her grandfather and her father mm-hmm. were bootleggers mm-hmm. as well and had quite a few mob relations. I guess they used to uh, drive the car. And so oh, okay. um, for like some mob drops and that type of thing. Okay. I think that was over in California though. Oh, okay. So we were on the West Coast doing mob shit. You were on the East Coast doing yeah, mob right. shit. So delightful. It's so interesting. I, I know, know right? <laughs> Oh. Wait, what would a life I had if I was in a mob? Nicholas equally? might feel a little more threatened. Right? <laughs> to join the family business. Yeah. You need a lot of salami and that's gumbo. Gumbo. Gum <laughs> oh, I've seen The Sopranos. Uh, no, it was just interesting. So, I mean, I thought that was an interesting family story. Is it true? Who knows? I love family stories. Like, yeah, right? we, my grandma always said that I think it was her grandfather. He was one of the richest men in America. Mm. And my understanding is he actually helped found uh, the Pony Express and oh. Wells Fargo. Wow. And um, he got, he lost all of his money when the stock market crashed. Oh. But the story is that he, uh, like the Vanderbilts and Carnegie's and all those big guys, they kind of, conspired against him mm. and got all of his money and then he died of a broken heart is what they say after losing all of his money but his mansion is still standing and i guess the show dark shadows uh-huh. remember the old vampire show from mm-hmm. the 60s it was filmed there really yeah, it's a museum now that's cool so yeah you had money too then i know it's fucking dried up now <laughs> No, but my grandma always was a little bit snobby. Oh, and really? we think that's why. It's like she, she came from sort of money that was not there anymore. Right. And actually, she had a total shitty life. She grew up very poor. Aww. Her stepmother beat her with oh a, my gosh. Like, yeah, coat hangers and shit. <gasps> and she was actually going to be adopted by the people who owned the Drake Hotel in San Francisco. Uh-huh. And it was going to be like this very wealthy debutante and everything mm-hmm. and her stepmother found out and snagged her back that just right when you said that i was just like no pedal hangers ever. <laughs> oh exactly oh she remembers having to um mix the dye into margarine what so yeah i guess back in the day margarine came and it looked like lard so it was just white Ew. and you've got this little capsule of yellow powder uh-huh. and so you open the capsule and you put it in and then you had to like mix it up with your hands and that was my grandma's job and Whoa. so as we were growing up and my mom was growing up they only ever had butter because she could not eat margarine at all wow because she had to mix up the dye all right yeah you're welcome Look at right. us both. Look at <sighs> We should have been richer. I know, right? <laughs> Sad. Uh, All right. So the singers got some. Yeah, the story. singer. Another non That's what I'm going to call you now, the singer. You should. Okay. My God, I wish you would. <laughs> <sighs> the singer or the angel. You're welcome oh, for both. Oh, singer. Sing- I feel like the angel kind of has double duty because I feel like I'd probably be a hitman. You know, if I had the name The Angel, yeah, I'm going to be a hitman for the mob. Right. I'm going to go around shooting everyone in the head. Like the angel of death? Yeah. Like my punches, bitch. (laughs) One punch. (laughs) Dead. Dead. (laughs) Sorry. No, but I have one more story, quickly, about Turkey. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay, we came back to Turkey. We're back in Turkey. No, so I read this other story, and actually it was a video, 
where a man was saved by a mysterious man oh. walking by. And I watched the video and it was very interesting. So it was this man in Turkey and he uh, was like moving, I don't think he was moving boxes, but he was sort of moving stuff. He had like a stall of things uh-huh. and was focused on what he was doing and kind of had his head down and was moving all around. And you see this man approach sort uh-huh. of in a suit with a black hat yes. and you can't see his face or anything like that. And he's walking up. And as he walks past the man, he taps him on the shoulder. I saw the video. You did? Yes. Oh, my god! Isn't it crazy? And he it sort is. of, he looks up. And then right as he looks up, he sees this, like, uh, what is it called? The, like, the like a, p- parking, what are those called? I don't know. I thought it was, like, something on a truck. The truck was coming, and it was, like, a. It was one of those, like, um, like a, at train tracks, the things that come down. Oh, okay. He, what is that? Maybe that was something else I saw. Anyway. He, Anyways. He tapped him on the shoulder. He looks up. The man who tapped him on the shoulder just keeps on walking. Yeah. And you never see him again. And he just, like, looks up just in time to see this, like, big board coming out oh, at yes. him. yes. Okay, yeah. And he would have probably gotten his, like, skull bashed mm-hmm. in if he hadn't looked up right at that time. Right. And then he was looking around all like, what? What? Yeah. So, another turkey saving the day. Or someone in Turkey saving the day. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, because I saw a video like that, but I thought it was like a truck that had something like swing open from the back. Maybe. Or something like that. I don't know. It was something swinging. Yeah, it was like... It was, well, I hit him, but it was behind... So the guy wouldn't see it coming. That's what right. I'm saying. yeah. So the, he taps him and keeps walking. And he looks up just in time to not get brained yeah. by this thing. Watch it. Just some dude just trying to be like, <laughs> look this way. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Do you know you can't who, see me. what I immediately thought of, though, what? was the Father Time story that oh, your friend yeah. told. Oh, yeah, Andy. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. That kind that's of... so creepy. Like, that was a good story. Yeah. Good job, Andy. We like that one. We did like that one. I think about it from time to time. Mm-hmm. I do. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into That's my story. last story about turkey. All right. <laughs> so. I hear you have uh, American names. Yes. <laughs> yes. So no apologizing We're today. We're in Florida today. Okay. There probably will be a lot of apologizing. Girl, have you ever met me? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So I'm taking us back to July 8th, 2017. Hmm. And we're in Florida in the Panhandle. And okay. so this family, the the Usury family, eight in total, are out at the beach mm-hmm. in this evening. So in the um, evening, it's yeah. You oh, it's know, Florida. Duh, yeah, okay. in July. So you know the sun probably doesn't even go down until after nine o'clock. I'm thinking and, the Oregon coast. At yeah, night, you're like, like no. no, that's cold as shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, the kids are actually in the water, so mm. that tells you it's not Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's two boys, Noah and Stephen. Noah's eleven. Stephen's eight. Okay. They take their boogie boards and head out to the waves to just go have a little good time and they went out and the grown-ups actually didn't notice their mom has gone to the bathrooms just quickly to mm-hmm. come back and the dad is just is hanging out and didn't notice that the boys took off into the ocean so the kids are just like hey we're gonna go in the water or the dad's just I they probably so. just like picked up their boogie boards and headed I mean, they're out. at the beach, yeah. Actually. Yeah, we're having a good time. It's all it's all fun. When the boys are almost like seventy yards uh, away from the shore, oh. they sort of realize that the ocean has taken them further out <gasps> than they expected to be. Oh, no. So they try to paddle back in okay. to shore. And they start waving and screaming for help when they realize that they're not, they're working their hardest and they're not getting any closer to oh, shore. Oh, no. The lifeguards have clocked out for the evening, oh, so they're of gone. Um, there is a yellow flag waving, but these are all locals and they don't really pay attention <laughs> to the oh. warnings anyway. So they don't even hardly remember there even being a warning flag out. So after a while, the boys are still struggling. Tabitha and Brittany walk by, and they're a married couple, and they sort of see the heads of the boys sort of bobbing up and down, and they're like, if they call for help, I'm going out. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, they can tell that maybe something is not quite right. Right. But they are not fully sure that something is wrong, I guess. They're just like, hmm, something's weird. So they hear the boys call for help, and both of them immediately launch into the water to go give them a hand. I know. It's like, oh, you guys are amazing. (laughs) 
So they're still in fairly uh, shallow water. It's only okay. six feet deep at this point. So the women reach the boys and they're reassuring them and they're getting their boogie boards and it's like, hang on to this, get up on it and we'll get you back to shore. Okay. But then they realize that they also can't (gasps) get back to shore. So they're stuck, all four of them now, in a riptide. Oh, no. So they're just getting pulled further and further out and... They're just swimming and swimming and swimming, trying to get back into shore. And they're all they're doing is exhausting themselves. They're not making it any further in or anything. The ocean is just pulling them out. I know how to survive that. Well, we talk about that. Okay. How do you survive it, Kaylin? Do I want? Do you want me to say it? Yeah. Okay. I think you uh, you have to swim uh, parallel. So you have to ride, swim sideways and slowly yes. make your way. Oh my god! That I is remember. exactly correct. I got taught that. No, that is what um, you're supposed to do. Is right. you're supposed to swim parallel to mm-hmm. the shore. They were trying to swim directly Straight. to mm-hmm. the shore and just getting themselves uh, even more trapped and more tired and more tired. Okay. So now is when I talk about how you're supposed to swim parallel to the shore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just so proud of myself. I remember. But we know. So the actually the women do try to swim parallel to the store. Okay. To the shore, excuse me. Um, but no matter which way they try to swim, they're stuck. Oh, They just really? keep getting pulled right back out <gasps> and in that same spot. Oh, no. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> so Brittany, who has eight-year-old Steven. Oh, okay. Uh, with her is just struggling to keep her head above water oh, my at this gosh. point. And so she panics and releases the boy and just tries to make a go for the shore. <gasps> no! And... So, that was a... F- <laughs> yeah, I was like, sorry, I need to make a... I need to get to safety. But by now there's teenagers on the shore that have sort of heard the commotion. Uh-huh. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? So one of the teens, who is a boy that's tall enough, he's like over six foot. Oh, so he can just reach, stand. Yeah, he can just reach out there. He dashes into the water, grabs Brittany, and hauls her back to shore. Okay. So Brittany is now... Safe. Safe. Okay. So, but Brittany is still hysterical. Right. And a man, just another random man, was heading back to his car and was like, what's wrong? Uh And she's like, my wife is drowning. I need help. And so this man, his name is Sean... He looks out and he sees the three of them out Mm -hmm. there struggling. So he sees a trio of heads popping through the waves. He immediately strides out into the water, even though he is actually has this very big fear of doing it. Oh. Because he himself almost drowned a year ago. Oh, no. So in a similar riptide. So he got caught out in one of those almost drowned. And so he like did not want to go back out into the ocean, but he went anyway. So, there is a 15 feet gap. He's waded out to the water kind of as far as he can, but now there's a 15 feet between him and Tabitha and the boys. Okay. So, Tabitha is still screaming for help, and he pretty much, he doesn't want to abandon them, but he feels like at this point he doesn't have any other choice. And so, he heads back into shore. Okay. And... His wife is like, oh, don't leave, don't leave. We need your help. And she, he's like, I'm going to get more help. Okay. You stay here. You stay calm. I'm going to go. And so what he does is he goes and he calls him and his daughter, call 911. Oh, okay. So 911 is now being called. Okay. So now enter Roberta. Roberta is the boys' mom. So Roberta is back from the bathroom. Okay. And she's looking around and notice that her two sons are nowhere to be found. And she was in the bathroom the whole time, though. Yeah, I mean, we're probably talking about maybe two or three. I mean, probably not that much time has right. passed. Okay, you know, it all happened really quickly. Who knows? Maybe she had another kid there. She was changing diapers. Who right. could say? Who but, could say? Yes, Roberta was in the bathroom. All right. And she comes back and sees her kids floating on their boogie boards, way the fuck out to sea. You know, and she's like, "That's further than they're allowed to go." Right. And what the fuck is going on here? So she starts hollering at him to come ashore. Yeah. Like, you little fuckers, get back here. That's what I would be saying. Oh, my poor kids. (laughs) And then she realizes that they're stuck out there. And she just now begins to panic. And so she immediately sprints into the water. No! (laughs) She fights the waves to get to her sons and the stranger, obviously yeah. Tabitha. Who is it, Tabitha? Or have I got no? Name Brittany. Wrong? No, Brittany was. Brittany's in... out there. No, or Brittany, Brittany came is... back. Brittany came back. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> 
See, I told you, there's just a lot of names. Yeah, right? For some reason, I always do better when you're telling stories. I can keep track of all the names, but right. <laughs> when I'm telling the stories, it's a fucking nightmare. All right. So, Roberta gets out there, and she's like, I'm going to help you guys. I'm going to get you guys all out here. And she seizes one of the boards, the boards with the boy on top, and starts kicking towards the shore. Okay. But then she quickly realizes... That she is now also in trouble. Oh, my God. So. <laughs> but she, then one's on the way. Hopefully. Okay. So now other people are beginning to notice all this commotion that's like 70 yards off the coast. But the sort of the gravity of the situation is not entirely clear. It's like, is that just a group of people swimming out there? Like, yeah. what's going on? So they're only like six feet depth of water mm-hmm. or that's really why can't like the six foot something do just come out well i actually think they must be a little further out oh, okay um than that but i don't think it is that deep okay so i mean we're not talking about 20 feet under him or anything like that i think he just got as far as he could go and then couldn't oh i see get any further i see okay a few yards away there's an asian couple that are trading water and trying to inflate a like a little ring of a little flotation ring oh you know, okay like a little kids uh-huh a little ring that you float around in so they likely went out to help the boys but there was a language barrier as roberta's like shouting for help and oh. so they kind of back up and end up not helping oh. yet okay so then just beyond them there is a young man on a surfboard who's oh. trying to, like, catch waves. So he sees that Tabitha and Roberta have both screamed for help for yeah. him to come over. So they he gets over, and they're thinking, if we can just get the surfboard over here, uh-huh. then we can all just sort of float on that and then eventually make our way back. Okay. As long as they just had something that they could hang on to, you know. They, they're tired. Yeah. I mean, they're okay. just getting more and more tired. So the surfer laughs and paddles off. What the fuck? <laughs> what a dick. I know, what a dick. That's not the spirit of Thanksgiving no. at all. This is July, but whatever. <laughs> so they're feeling pretty, pretty down yeah. as the, you know, surfer takes off. So Roberta sees her grown nephew, Justin, surface nearer to the shore. So he had been exploring the shallows underwater, oblivious to what was even going on. So he pops up. And is kind of looking around and sees his aunt and little cousins are in trouble. Uh-huh. So he... He's like a little snorkel or whatever. Yeah, I think he was just sort of tooting around, cutting around. around, yeah. cutting around. Thank you, that's the word I was looking for. So he's heading out there, but Roberta's like, don't come out here because you'll get stuck too. Yeah. You know, so she's yelling at him and pretty much is like, we're all going to drown. And he swims over to him anyway. <laughs> so he's like, eh. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'm a strong swimmer. <laughs> So he says, give me one of the boys. And so he pretty much persuades her to, because Roberta's like, fuck that. I'm not giving you one of my kids. Yeah. I keep hanging on to him. I want him to live. So he finally persuades her to give him the 11-year-old Noah. Mm-hmm. And he throws Noah onto the boogie board and sets off for shore. But Justin, too, comes to understand that the riptide is more than he can handle. Ah! So... He is now... It's collecting group. <laughs> no, there's like six people out there now. Fortunately, there's help on the way. Sean, who we know, yeah. was the one who almost drowned and then came in to not abandon them, yeah. but call 911, returned to Water's Edge. And he's looking around, looking for something to help save their life. A rope, something that floats, just anything. Mm-hmm. Mainly a rope. <laughs> yeah. To get out there. And then he sees another man who's running towards the water. And he's like, dude, don't. don't go out there. And he's like, that's my family. So it's dad. Oh, no. <laughs> no, dad, no. And dad just fucking charges in anyway and swims towards him. So Sean uh, spots two police officers and rushes up to him. The officers, he says later, uh-huh. uh, not only refuse to help, but also attempt to stop him and any other would-be rescuers from entering the water. What? Why? I Probably because 
more people would get right. stuck out okay. there, you know. And so they're like, nah, man. But Sean ignored him and instead flags down a few other of the beachgoers and together they start wading into the water. Oh, so, so like a big group of them? Mm-hmm. So okay. to keep from losing uh, their footing and things, they are holding on to each other. Oh. So he just starts gathering up people and gathering up people and together they form a human chain. And head on out. So, okay, so they have people on the shore and they're going out that way, not just like a line of people going out. It's just Right, like... they're not like side by side walking out right, parallel they... to okay. the shore. They're going out perpendicular to the shore oh my to head gosh. out. So he spots Derek and Jessica. They're a local married company in their 20s. And he just starts rallying people yeah. to come help. He's like, don't just stand there. There's got to be some hope left for humanity in some of you. <laughs> That's awesome. He probably didn't say anything close to that, but <laughs> I'm going with it. So it starts to happen. One by one, more people are beginning to help and okay. kind of linking together and heading out towards, you know, this group of people who are clearly about to drown. So Jessica and Derek, the married couple in their 20s. Yeah. Jessica is an unusually strong swimmer. Oh. Unusually? So, yeah. <laughs> She's just hella good. <laughs> okay. So she grabs two boogie boards and swims past the line that okay. is, in fact, still forming. And she wants to get to them so she can help. So she reaches the end of the chain, uh -huh. which is now 20 to 30 feet shy of where our group of Okay. Swimmers, exhausted swimmers are. And the tall man at the end of the chain says, do you think you can get close enough to them where you can just grab them? And she's like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so Jessica's like, hell yeah, I can do that. Yeah. And so she starts swimming out. And when she turns around, her husband is swimming right next to her. And he's like, uh, I couldn't just leave you out there right. by yourself. So they're going out together. So Derek, the husband, grabs Noah's board from Justin, who has been still trying to desperately get his young cousin to the human chain. Yeah. Now he's trying to swim. And he just hasn't been able to. At one point, actually, Noah fell off the boogie board and his cousin Justin just grabbed him by his swim trunks and just shoved him oh. right back on. Um, and they just start swimming as fast as, as, like, as hard as they could towards the human chain. Uh -huh. So as soon as he gets them to the end of the chain where Sean was, mm -hmm. our, you know, guy who called 911, he was able to, like, go like lightning and actually get him to the front of the chain. Oh, wow. So, so just like, whoop, he yeah. just went straight And up. so they start pulling, they use the chain to start pulling Noah back onto shore. Yeah. So they're just, like, from one person to the next of so this kid on this boogie board. So all this while, Jessica has been helping Stephen make his way over to the chain. So now at this point, the chain is almost 70 volunteers long. Wow. So they got all kinds of people to help get it out there. And so once they were able to reach the first person in the chain, he is then, just like Noah, you know, sort of whisked back onto shore. Wow, okay. From just, you know, all these people passing along. So the two boys along. are safe. The two boys are safe. So now they pass uh, Roberta okay. onto the chain. And at this point, she is just completely limp and is hardly conscious. <gasps> I mean, just from being so completely exhausted. Oh, my gosh. So she is actually, they get her to the front of the chain and, you know, to get shore. her to the shore. And it's a full five minutes before she ever wakes up. <gasps> and she actually, it turns out it was... A blessing because of what happened, considering what happened to her mother. Mm -hmm. So we have Barbara, who is Roberta's mother. Uh, she saw her two grandsons struggling out there, and she was like, fuck it, and went out. I'm going to rescue them myself. So grandma is out there now, going? Yeah. grandma's oh like, gosh. fuck it, I got to save them myself, and she just just rolls right in there and oh right gosh. to the danger zone. And she had had two heart attacks the pre in the past two months. Oh, Grandma, no. So within minutes, she's just, the water has overwhelmed her. Yeah. <laughs> so I bet. 
she's she's still out there when Roberta and the two boys are brought to shore. Uh-huh. But she doesn't even realize that they have been rescued because she's in such kind of deep shit herself. Oh, my gosh. So she sinks into hopelessness as her body continues to fail her. No! So Justin tries desperately to float his grandmother on along the shore on the boogie board. Yeah. But she keeps flopping off. Her limbs are like spaghetti. And over and over, the waves are just hitting them. And she'll go under, and then Justin will bring her back yeah. up, and then she goes under, and then the oh. Justin will bring her back up. And all the while, which I didn't realize, Justin has a broken hand. <gasps> so what? It's just, I think he just had it already. Oh. And, you know, because he was the one yeah, putting around. Yeah, around, but... Yeah. <laughs> so... Okay. So Derek comes up to give him the assist and immediately realizes the gravity of the situation. Grandma is going to die. Like, if they don't Ugh. do something quick to help her. Yeah. So by this point, the surfer returned. And oh. The, he can see, like, oh, there's a chain. Something's happening. Yeah, obviously, maybe I shouldn't have laughed and yeah. just swam immediately off. So he gave his surfboard to Derek. So Derek managed to get Grandma on top of the surfboard. So somehow Justin, okay. not Derek, yes. swims to the end of the chain and add, he pretty much adds to oh, the okay. link. And then he is able to pull his grandmother on the surfboard. And they're able to sort of, even though despite his injured hand, are able to get, oh my God able to get grandma on the shore okay even though justin can hear his bones re-breaking Ew. i know Aww. so grandma appears lifeless but moments later she starts vomiting seawater Ugh. so she later says that she felt her dead husband carl <gasps> appealing to her while she was unconscious and believes that part of herself was in fact dead oh my god <laughs> she spent a few days in the hospital and months recovering what from what turns out to be her third heart attack. Oh so my somehow she had had a heart attack during this whole time. I bet. So now everyone is ashore except for Tabitha. No. The wife who went yeah. out to try to save. She's been them. out there the, like the longest other than the boys. Yeah. No, it's, she flounders about 20 feet from the end of the chain and the boys dad Along with the boy said Brian. So I oh, guess... Okay, so two of them are out there. There are two of them out there. So Tabitha is beyond exhausted, and she is just Done. despairing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just like, this is the end. Yeah. I'm sorry, I probably saved, tried to save these boys. Actually, she's probably not sorry at all. No. I'm going out next She got heroes. things started. Yeah. So Brian tells her to hold on, I got you, and... Again and again, he digs his toes into the sand and tries to toss her forward. Aww. So he's kind of going down, yeah. coming up, and trying to throw her. Okay. Trying to get her to that human chain. But it's just not no really luck. working. Okay. So Sean and the others in the chain see what's happening. And they shout that they need to get closer to Tabitha. So there's a great scrambling on the surf, and a moment later, the chain reforms, and now it's aligned to rescue Tabitha. Aww. Okay. So they've sort of broken up and then repositioned, gotten back, repositioned and gotten into a better place where they could grab her. So Brian manages to find his footing and wades in on his own steam, but in the meantime, he has essentially pushed her forward okay. towards the chain. The chain. So she gets pulled to, to okay. the shore and everything. And so now everyone's in and everybody is completely celebrating. Yeah. So they've managed to save everybody, including grandma. Aww. <laughs> and, and then Brian just. Got yeah, he managed to get to the chain to be you. able to like reach the bottom enough push to sort himself. of push himself okay. to the chain and then got in. And he said, it didn't matter what color you were, what age you were, everyone stopped what they were doing. They got off their phones, tablets, whatever, and helped my family get Aww. out of the water. Those people on that beach that day were angels on earth. Yeah, the angel. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So the, did 911 even come? Uh, yeah, they came and they were like, no, nah, we're not helping you. What? And remember they told Sean that they weren't going to help. The officers. I'm assuming they came from 911. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't explain what 911 did. It sounds like nothing. Just take them to the hospital where they yeah. were saved. Here's a picture. It turns out over 80 people 
help wow. create this human chain to get those people out. So like, there they are look way that over far, there. But it's like the ocean is fucking scary, man. Yeah, you cannot. Oh, that I makes know. my heart so happy. I know. So they managed to save everybody. No one died. No one was hurt. Maybe a little traumatized, but they were all all alive. That's so sweet. I don't know. I was thinking of like all these people getting together. Yeah. The this, this spirit of Thanksgiving. That's true. All I don't very know if that's thankful. True. All very thankful. <laughs> that's so sweet. I but love not... that. So I just liked all the people getting together yeah. and working together to save lives. Save lives. I would be pissed if I was Tabitha and my wife left me with two children. <laughs> I'd be like, you bitch. <laughs> We're going to have a talk tonight. I guess it's like the fight and flight. Like, she's like, I got to go. But yeah. still, like, your loved one is just like, all right, well, I'll take care of these children and try not to drown myself. <laughs> oh, poor thing. It was, you know, but if she hadn't, she probably would have drowned. Yeah, no, and, that's true. You know, and then she kind of knew she she'd can. be in trouble, yeah. At well, least once that you way panic, she can go for help. And... Yeah. Well, like, once you panic, it's just... It's, it's pretty much over. Yeah. yeah. You have to try to stay calm, which is hard in that situation. Oh, I don't even know what I would do. I don't think... I... No, I I don't think I used to have as much respect for the ocean. And then I went to Hawaii one time and we went to... It was called the Big Beach. Mm-hmm. But it turns out its nickname was the Breakneck Beach. Oh. Which, thank God, I didn't know yeah, ahead right? of time. And I just go out, you know, swimming like kind of normal. But trying to get in... I mean, the waves just crashed right on top of you. Yeah. And I just remember one time trying to make my way into the shore and just getting this wave just fall on me. Mm-hmm. And just, I got tossed all around. Oh, wow. I mean, I was doing somersaults in the water. Oh my gosh. All kinds of crazy shit. And I was like, what the fuck is yeah. happening? <laughs> this is not normal. Yeah. And, um, but I guess it's just the waves, how they crash on that particular shore uh-huh. that it's very easy for people to hurt themselves oh, wow. and so you had to time your coming into shore with the waves oh my gosh yeah it was difficult like you were booking ass like yeah. trying to get out of the ocean at just the right time i respect the ocean yeah good like call. you should never turn your back on the ocean and when i was in college in biology we went to the coast to look at tide pools oh yeah know? i think and i went on that same field trip probably, yeah <laughs> And our team was in the farthest one out, and we're looking at these tadpoles. Of course, my back is to the ocean because I didn't, you know, know at the time, or, you know, just wasn't, it was a tap, whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, I look up, and my teacher's like, get back in here. (laughs) And I turn around, and we are just, the tide came in. And so we're just like, oh. Oh, shit. Here comes the, here comes the ocean just in. He's like, come. We're like trying to tiptoe, like. It's coming. It's just terrifying. No. You just never know. You well, have to pay attention. Well, especially with all the rocks right there. Yeah. I mean, you just... You had to pay attention. Yeah. I mean, the ocean hits you in just a certain way. It can just crash you right yeah. on those rocks, man. Ugh. Ocean is terrifying, but it is. beautiful. Well, fortunately, Ugh. all these people got together. They saved everyone. Mm-hmm. Saved the day. Poor grandma had another heart attack, but she I lived. Know. I know. I mean, like in Oregon, good luck finding 70 people on the, on the beach. <laughs> no, you're like, dead. You're yeah. dead. <laughs> Um, I forgot about my great, my great grandfather, but he applied for citizenship, but they didn't give it to him because of like immoral, because they knew about his family in <laughs> Italy. So they're like, nah, you cannot be a citizen, a citizen here because so of what that. Happened? Like, did, were you guys just born like your grandma? Mm-hmm. And so she's a citizen. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because he married someone who was... Oh, uh, and then he became a citizen mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I know, right? Nah. No. (laughs) You're not a terrible person. (laughs) (laughs) Citizenship. But I guess he wasn't a very kind person. Well, you are very kind and wonderful. (gasps) Thank you. No mom telling me. Good job. I'm weak. (laughs) You'd be a citizen for sure. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Uh, You're not morally bankrupt. No. Not yet, anyway. Yet. Give it time. Give it time. 2020, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fucking who knows? Uh, we got another month. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I recommend trying this drink because... Yes, please try this drink. It is, like I said, be careful because it's just alcohol <laughs> with a splash of half and half. Well, it's a lot of liqueurs. That's so true. So it's not super strong not, alcohol. Right, but there's still like four different kinds. Yeah, and it is just all that. And it's very rich. I mean, it's a sipper. Yeah, granted, our sippers went pretty fast. Because they're good. So. <laughs> it's like melted ice cream.
cream. It's it is like, like melted ice cream. Me- melted vanilla cinnamon ice cream or Ooh. cinnamon. Oh, God. Mm. I'm not going to say it anymore. I know. I feel like I need to add some more singing. The singer. Oh. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. We hope... You know, you all stay safe. Indeed. I know Oregon has, you can only have like six people. Um, I know, we're having our smallest Thanksgiving ever. Yeah. But it's, it's it's for the better. I mean, let's just I, try to I would a- rather have a small Thanksgiving than have COVID. Yeah, so. exactly. So, <laughs> And then pass COVID on to my sister. Like, that's my worst nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. Is to have someone in my family die because... I was irresponsible. Exactly, yeah. So let's try to beat this COVID all together, just like the linking of the arms of the oh, beach. Okay, oh, my God. You've I... done it. You've done it. <laughs> I tied it together. Um... <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> so uh, please follow us on all the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, on our website, I should totally be dead right now, dot com. And, yeah, we'll see Enjoy you. Enjoy this bonus episode, I know, right? if you will. Makeup ex- episode. That's yeah, makeup. Better. Yeah, makeup episode. Whatever. All right. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Yay.